one of the most important herbicide groups or mode of actions basically that we want to talk about is group 15. So these group 15 herbicides can be used in corn and in soybeans. That's our topic for today. Well they can even be used in wheat Brian now with Zidua being labeled there but when you think about group 15s I guess this is the place I want to start is just which products are we talking about. We're talking about Outlook, Dual, Warrant and Zidua primarily. So we've got some products that, hey, if you're a corn farmer, you say, yep, I recognize all those names. If you're a soybean farmer, you say, hey, I recognize all those names and even wheat with the Zidua. So these are products that are getting used quite a bit in multiple crops. All right, now Darren, you left out Harness and Surpass. Those are pre-emerge herbicides that can be used early post as well in corn. You're not gonna use those early post in soybeans. And I assume that's probably why you left that out because when we do look at Warrant, Outlook, Dual, Zidua, those can be used in corn or soybeans. So why would you use these group 15s? First of all, we get good residual control of annual grasses. And that's where the group 15s have been used for a long, long time, especially in corn, to try to control a lot of the grasses, foxtail species specifically, but they also control some other grasses as well. Now that we see Zidua going into wheat, uh, you can think of the other grasses that may be present there. We're getting a lot of the annual grasses under control with group 15s. However, they become more important in recent years because they also have some pretty good broadleaf activity on things like lamb's quarters, pigweed, and other small seeded broadleaves. Okay, when we talk about the broadleaf activity out of the group 15s, there are a lot of people today that they're all sold on this stuff. I'm still not. These products are not great products on broadleaves. They're okay. They're certainly a lot better than nothing. Where we really see the fit with these products in soybeans is early post. So we want you to use three pre's. Okay, that'll give you great control, not a lot of money. That's the way to go. But then you can go early post and throw in one of these group 15s. Just understand, they have absolutely zero contact activity. They are not gonna kill a weed that's up. All they give you is residual control. But the nice thing about using them early post is now you're probably a month, month and a half later from when you used your pre, so in other words, what I'm trying to say is, had you used that pre, well, it would run out of steam a lot earlier. When you use it early post, now it's going to last longer into the summer until you get that crop canopy. With a crop like soybeans, it doesn't reach crop canopy very often until we get into July. So you need residual control all the way till then. It's hard to do unless you use one of these group 15s early post. We like to use them in your first post-emerge pass. That way you've got some time to get some moisture out there and get them going. And we also like to do it before you start to see your initial pre-emerge herbicides break. So if you still have good weed control, now's the time to get back out there and get that group 15 to extend that residual. So we overlap the residual a little bit. The question though is, wow, we've detailed quite a few different group 15 products. What's the difference between these products? The biggest difference that we've seen is when you look at Harness, Surpass, and Warrant, they're all acetochlor. Well, acetochlor appears to us to work with a lot less moisture, but it doesn't last as long. It may move through the soil a little more. It's not going to last as long in heavy rain. It's not gonna last as long during the season. But in dry country where we farm, it's fine. It lasts plenty long enough because we are dry. Well, if let's say you have all kinds of rain, what we have seen so far out of Zidua is that seems to hold longer. It seems to take a little more moisture to get activated, but it does seem to hold a lot longer in heavy rain conditions. So in the Western Corn Belt, we like harness and surpass in corn. We like warrant in soybeans. If you go to the Eastern Corn Belt, that's really where we would prefer Zidua. The one other thing that I would say is the acetochlor is definitely the best on the small seeded broadleaves. Dual would definitely be the worst. Okay, and again, they're all terrible in my opinion, but they, they're way better than nothing. You're probably still talking 60, maybe even as much as 80% control in the small seeded broadleaves when you use the full rate. So again, it is better than nothing, but don't be counting on these to be miracle products. I just love working with Brian because everything is terrible. Either it's nearly 100% control or it's just terrible because it let one weed get through. Hey, these are much better options than anything else that we've got. So we really like the group 15, so we want to protect them. When we look at corn programs, we're typically using group 15s as a pre-emerge herbicide or maybe you're going to be out there either well in advance of planting or right after planting, somewhere in that time window. 
in soybeans, we really like to save them for post-emerge. So how do you do that in a corn and soybean rotation and not run the risk of losing these group 15s to resistance from weeds? Well, the big thing that you want to do is use multiple modes of action. So if you're using it as a pre-emerge, a group 15 pre-emerge in corn, that's fine. But if you're coming back with Roundup or Liberty or one of these products that will clean up any escaped grasses, great. Now we've got at least a couple different modes of action out there. And many of the group 15s are being tank mixed or pre-mixed, I should say, with HPPDs and other modes of action. That's going to help preserve that group 15 in corn. In soybeans, I really don't want to see you using group 15 down and then group 15 over the top. I know in some cases that's being done. Even so, even if that is being done and we don't have a crop safety issue with too much group 15 out there for soybeans, we want to make sure we're using lots of other modes of action there so we don't run the risk of resistance. And the last piece of good news I have for you today is almost all the group 15s continue to come down in price every year. We look for that trend to continue in 2018. These group 15s are nice for a lot of weeds, but they are not going to control our weed of the week. We'll show you what will coming up later in the show.